Hello, I will start with a few questions. The first one is, what is a weak acid? So what is your answer? Right. All depends on what theory. Because you can use Arrhenius definition of acids, but that is so outdated. We are not interested on Arrhenius definition of acids. So you can ask, okay, what is the definition of acids according with one of the most important definitions we use? What definition is that? Right. Bronze de Lori. And this one more definition of acids. Which one is that? Yes. Louis definition of acids and bases. So we have two main definitions here. We have Brostellori, definitions of acids and bases. And we have also, we have definition alcohol with Lewis. So two important definitions we use nowadays. Mainly, Prostelori definitions of acids. So what is, according with Prostelori, what is a acid? So what is your answer? Yes. A brostellori acid is a species that donors a proton in a aqueous solution. And what is that proton? It's H plus ion in aqueous solution. It's a proton donor that is an acid. And what, what is the, what is a base? According to Bronstellori. Yes, a Brostellori base is a species that accepts a proton. So this is a donor. Of protons and this one accepts protons. So that's a base, according to Bruce Tellori. So let's review what is a Lewis acid and what is a Lewis base.
acid, according with Luis, or Luis' definition of acid is a, a species that accepts a pair of electrons. It's a pair of electrons acceptor. Conversely, according with Louis' definition of acids and bases, a base is a species that donates a pair of electrons. Great. So we know the definitions of acids and bases we are using. From now on, we continue using bronze telluride. Later, we come back to Louis' definitions of acids and bases. Second question. Since we already know what is an acid, the question is, what is a weak acid? What do you say? Yes, a weak acid is the acid that ionizes partially, or par partial ionization. When dissolved in water. So what is a weak base? A weak base is a base that goes through a partial ionization, ionization when dissolve in water. All right, so we have the basic concepts back. Let's work for a while with weak acids and weak bases. We'll start working with, with weak acids. We are going to find, we'll show you how to find the KAs of the weak acid. What is a Ka? Is the ionization constant of a weak acid, Ka. And that is giving you a hint here. Because when you see Ka right away, you say that is a weak Acid. Right away. 
You see Ka? You know, we are talking about weak acid. When you read this weak acid, and you know you probably will need the Ka of the weak acid to work with. And that's, a, that, that's the, the clue given in, in, in the problems. Even if the problem, if the problem doesn't mention the Ka and you're working with the weak acid, you know you need to find the Ka or the weak acid somewhere. In the back of your textbook, in a list of weak acids, usually when you go to the textbook or chemistry manuals, you will find a list of weak acids with their KAs. So that information is available. You, you, you need to find it. You need to search for that. Usually we give those, those uh, values of KAs for the weak acids. Strong acids don't have KA, or the, K, the KAs are too small. They are negligible. So don't worry about KAs of uh, strong acids. Ka it applies only for a weak acid. Now, we can calculate the pH if we know the Ka. This, are, this is one of the strategies we use to solve the problem. If you know Ka, you can find the pH of the solution. We can find percent ionization also if we know Ka or if we know the pH of the solution. Or we can use the pH to find the value of Ka for that weak acid. We are going to do the same process for the weak basis. So we learn how to figure how to find the values of Ka, the pH, the percent ionization, and how to use the pH to find the Ka. You, we are going to use similar procedure to find those concepts for the weak basis. So let's start. Here. Let's find the Ka's for the weak acid. So this is the representation for a weak acid. This is what we call the generic equation of a weak acid. This one represents our weak acid. Remember the weak acid contains the hydrogen in the species attached to a anion. For instance, H, here the anion is Cl, so we have hydrochloric acid. So this is the hydrogen. This is the active part of the acid. And this is just a companion to balance the uh, charge here. Remember they are sharing a pair of electrons. So this is the an anion has a negative charge. It's in IQS, reacts with water. And since this is an acid, 
and this is working as a acid. Therefore, Bora is going to be a base. And we know Bora is always a weak acid or weak base. And hydrochloric acid is strong. But for our weak acids, this is going to represent the weak acid. And so this one here will be the weak. But it still has the anion there. Since this is a acid, it's going to donate the proton to water. And water, the weak base, will become the conjugate acid of the water. Because it gains that proton from the weak acid. And the weak acid once ionizes, becomes the conjugate base. So there's going to be the conjugate base of the weak acid. Remember, the hydrogen ion is the most acidic species. So here we just found the acid base conjugate acid base pairs of bronze acid base pairs for the weak acid. This is the long way to write it and this is the short way to write it. Simplification of that here, water is not included because already it says here it's aqueous. Water is there. So we know the water is accepting the proton. And this is the one that ionizes, forming the conjugate base. And also, something important is happening here. The double arrow, the double arrow, uh, the double arrow shows that for weak acids, there's an equilibrium, always. So when you write a weak acid equation for the ionization of the weak acid, <clears throat> you must write it with the equilibrium form. So we can write the equilibrium expression for that, for the weak acid. The mass action law says that the equilibrium constant of the weak acid, K sub A, equals concentration of H3O plus times concentration of A minus over concentration of the weak acid. So that is the initial, initial concentration of the weak acid. On the bottom, reactives over, sorry, products over reactives. You are using this way to write the simplified equation, then you express the Ka this way. Instead of writing H3O plus hydrogen ion, which is the most correct form, 
But sometimes for simplification, we just use H plus. But you be aware that this, this species doesn't exist in water solution. Doesn't exist. You, you won't find this. You, this H plus, this proton will be always attached to the water. It's going to actually form a covalent coordinate bond with water to form the hydro, hydrogen ion. Anyway, either expression of the equilibrium constant for the weak acid is fine. So Ka is what we call the acid ionization constant, or Ka. So when we have the Ka, it's important to see the magnitude. Check the magnitude of the Ka of your weak acid because that gives you a good information. The magnitude of Ka will tell you how strong or how weak is the acid. So if we have very low values of Ka, that means the acid is very weak. The bigger the number of Ka, that means the weak acid is becoming stronger. This is a list of some common weak acids with the formula, the structure, and their Ka values. Hydrofluoric acid, HF, with Ka equals to 7.5 times 10 to negative 4. So compare these numbers here, and you, but basically what you're looking is the, for the exponent. So notice that we, we go down in this column of Ka's, the exponent are becoming more and more negative. So these numbers are smaller. Right? Or, you, or we can say also that from bottom to top, Ka increases. From top to bottom, Ka decreases. In other words, this one has bigger Ka than this one on the bottom. So you can say that the first one in the list with the bigger magnitude of Ka is stronger than the one on the bottom, which is phenol. Mm, aromatic alcohol. So that's how, that, that, that's the piece of information you can get just by looking the Ka. So always check these numbers here for your Ka and you know the strength of the, of the of your weak acid. All of them are weak acids, but we, when we compare each other, we notice that this is stronger than all of them in this list. But still, it's a weak acid because look at the number. This is still a small number. So basically, weak, all weak acids or weak acids will have Ka less than one. That means that they are weak. 
benzoic acid, 6.5 times 10 to negative 5. And look at here, this one. Acetic acid. The acetic acid CH3 COOH has this structure. And you see here, this is the signature of this portion here that is just a square is the signature of a organic acids. They have carbon. It's a functional group, organic acids. And all organic acids are weak. And this is the signature. You see the carbon double bond, oxygen, carbon, single bond OH. This one here, carbon, single bond oxygen, oxygen, single bond H. And this one, in this structure, the one the hydrogen attached to the oxygen, which is at the same time attached to this carbon with double bond oxygen, is the carboxylic, forming the carboxylic group. This hydrogen is the acidic. Hydrogen. That means that's the one that is going to be donated. This weak organic acid, once it's put into water, is going to donate that hydrogen to water, making the solution acidic. Only that. So you say, okay, what about this hydrogen here? These hydrogens are attached to this carbon. So uh, another way to represent, let me, I want to suppose I'm assuming I'm erasing this hydrogens here, because I'm going to put it in a different place. Here, here, here. The three hydrogens that were shown here, they are actually here. Attach to this carbon and this bond, this bond, this bond, and this bond, carbon, carbon, forms a tetrahedral. Because this carbon has sp3 hybridization. And this bond, carbon hydrogen. which is a hybrid orbital here, sp3, is strong. This bond here is strong. So when you pour, pour this in water, this substance in water, water is not strong enough to gain this proton here. So this hydrogen will stay with carbon. This bond is strong, however, this bond is weak enough, so when water is present, and hydrogen has this pair of non-bonding electrons, they will catch the hydrogen. And this pair of electrons here making this weak bond will come to the oxygen.
once ionizes in the presence of water. To form a anion, and that anion give, receives a name from the original acid. So if the acid is like this, acetic acid, this anion will be called acetate. So acetic acid, once in water, you change ek for eight to become acetate ion once this hydrogen goes with water. We are going to, I spend some time here because we are going to use acetic acid in most of, most of our examples. And for simplicity, we don't want to write this structure, these formulas every time. I'm showing, showing you here what is the structure of acetic acid and what is the condensed structure formula of, of the acetic acid. But, but for now on, what I'm going to do is the following. I don't want to write the everything, all this structure every time I'm working with acetic acid. Instead, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to simplify this up to write equations. And I'm going to say H AC. That, what is this? Acetic acid. This is for now the symbol I'm going to use for acetic acid. It shows the acidic hydrogen and it shows the symbol I'm going to use for acetate, which is the rest. So you know that during the dissociation of this weak acid will react with water to form on equilibrium with its ions. What ions? H3 O plus plus the acetate ion, right? That comes during the ionization. So it's going to be AC, and what is the charge of this ion? Again, this oxygen gains this pair of electrons, so this will become negative. So we have the products of the ionization, ionization of acetic acid are hydrogen ion and the acetate. Ion. So we can classify, we can elaborate here the bronze acid base pair. And we can label and use this example, and you can apply this to any other organic acid. So this is going to be the weak. acid. Water is going to be our weak base. Remember water is always either weak acid or weak base. This time since it's reacting with a acid, weak acid, therefore water is going to be the base to form here the conjugate acid 
and here the conjugate base of the, of the weak acid. This is a weak acid and makes a strong conjugate base. Weak acid makes strong conjugate base. Here we have a weak base and guess what makes you already know what what did you answer water is a weak base and makes during the ionization a strong <clears throat> hydrogen ion. So we do similar, we, you can do the similar with any other organic acid. Notice that all of them, all, all these organic acids, how many organic acids you see in this, in this, uh, on this table. Can you check the organic acids? We can, can we label it? organic acid? All right, so we know this is organic acid. What about this? Benzoic acid. Yes, it is a organic acid. Benzoic acid. And guess what is the anion that comes after the initiation of this organic acid? This organic acid will establish an equilibrium forming hydrogen ion and a anion, the conjugate base. Usually, also, this is important, the conjug conjugate base is also called the salt. A is AC minus. That's the salt. The salt is a conjugate base. And those are those two are very strong. You see, strong and strong. So what is the tendency for these two guys? To stay separate or to join right away? What is your prediction? Remember, this is happening in aqueous. Everything here is aqueous. This is pure liquid. This is aqueous, always aqueous. And these ions, all ions, has to be always aqueous in our wet chemistry. So what is the tendency? What, what will happen once does these two are formed? Once they are formed, they are strong, strong, positive, negative, and there's immediate attraction. So what is the tendency? Yes, the tendency is to shift the equilibrium to the left. That's going to be the main reaction there. Shifting the equilibrium to the left because it's strong and strong to make these two back. And of course, they, they will push again and they say, you know what? Let's ionize again. That is going to be very weak. They form the two strong, they push back here to the, to the left. That's what we call a weak acids. It's partial ionization. And you see that just by looking the number, the Ka for this weak acid is 1.8 times 10 to negative 5. 
Don't forget this number we are going to see many times. Ka of acetic acid, 1.8 times 10 to negative 5. For benzoic acid, it's organic, yes. How do you know it's organic? Because it has the organic weak acid functional group. What about this? Is this a organic acid? Do you see the same function? Yes, it's right here. Every time you see that, you say that is a weak. Or if you see the you, you see the condensed structural formula, you see here, COH. What is that? Exactly the same thing here. Organic acid. You see this? It's an organic acid. Do you see organic acid here? Do you see organic? Do you see carbon? No, it's not organic. Do, is this organic acid? No, it's not. You don't see the same function. Here, we, we just say that it's an organic acid. There. What about here? This weak acid is organic acid. That's carbon. And it's acid, hydrocyanic acid. But it's not organic acid because organic acids are or have this functional group, COOH. What about this phenol? Is this an organic acid? No, it doesn't have the COOH signature. That's part, that part of the structure, so it's not considered a organic acid. It's a weak acid and it's organic compound, but it's not organic acid. Because organic acid, when you say organic acid, that's a family. It's a functional group with this very special signature. This belongs to a different family. This one here. Alcohol. And this one belongs to another functional group, aromatic. So it's a, 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 a conjunction between two functional groups. It's a aromatic alcohol. Phenols. All right. So that is what we're going to use. Uh, most of the cases, the acetic acid is uh, we are going to use for our example. The acetic acid is the main component of uh, vinegar. Vinegar as Probably you remember, you remember in your chemistry 11 when you did the titration of vinegar. You find the concentration of vinegar to around five, six percent of acetic acid. You will titrate in acetic acid in your vinegar. And it's produced mainly by a bacteria. All right, so let's start with some calculations. Calculating pH from Ka. So we have to bring back all what we learned on the equilibrium chapter. And we are going to use exactly the same thing. Just do the ice table, find the equilibrium concentrations, um, and that's it, write the mass action expression for your equation. Um, find what is given in the problem and use the tools you have available to solve the problem. In this one, K 
Ka is given. So the problem gives you Ka for the weak acid. What is the name of this weak acid? Hydrofluoric acid. It's an equilibrium because we have a weak acid. Therefore, we need to write the mass action expression for the process, for the equilibrium. Ka equals concentration of H3O plus times concentration of F minus. This is the anion. This is the conjugate base of the weak acid and has negative charge, that means it's strong, conjugate base, over initial concentration of HF. And that's given also. That's given. So you start with 0 0.50 molar HF. Also, the value of that Ka is given here. All right, so the procedure will be, of the strategy, to write <clears throat> your balanced chemical equation. HA, AQS plus water, I would prefer to write it, right? In equilibrium with hydrogen ion, so we know where the hydrogen ion is coming from. It comes from here, right? Plus the salt, the conjugate base, the anion F minus. So we create our ice table initial concentrations, the change of concentration, and the equilibrium concentration, our ice table. So initially, 0.50, that's given, and is already in molar concentration. Have to be careful with that. We have to worry about water, because water is part of the system, is the solvent. What is the initial concentration of H3O plus? Let's say zero. And you may say, hey, wait a minute. Last time you, you were mentioning something called out, 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 out ionization of water. Our ionization of water. What happened with that? H2 liquid plus H2 liquid in equilibrium forming H3 or plus, oops, this is O, plus OH minus AKS. What happened with this? Our equilibrium of water, our ionization of water. Kw equals concentration of OH minus times concentration times concentration of H3O plus. Yeah, what happened with this? Uh, well, the reason what happened is we don't have to worry about that here. Why not? Because look at the concentration. 
and look the value for this auto ionization of water. Do you remember the value for the KW for pure water at 25 degrees Celsius? Do you remember? Yes, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. And this concentration, concentration, <clears throat> pure water, concentration of H3O plus for pure water will be 1.0 times 10 to the negative seven. Very small number compared to the ionization that will come from this concentration. So it's not relevant here. The auto ionization is not relevant. It will become relevant if you have very small concentration of this. You have very small concentration of this, then you will have very small concentration of H3O plus in equilibrium that will be close to this concentration here from the auto ionization of water. Now that will become relevant. Not in this case, not today. This concentration is, is pretty big and we yield some concentration of this. So initially, let's say there's nothing. We, we can say this is this number is negligible and it's not important compared to this initial concentration of HF. Again, it will become important. That number from here will become important here only if we have very diluted solutions. All right. So initial concentration of this zero, initial concentration of this zero. The change comes again from the stoichiometric coefficients. It's negative because the reaction is going from here to there. So this one decreases and those one, the products increases, concentration of the products increases. <clears throat> so the change is <clears throat> negative x on the products plus x plus x. At the equilibrium, we'll have 0.50 minus the change will be 0.50 minus x. Uh, at the equilibrium, we'll have x and x for H3O plus and F minus. If we plug these equilibrium concentrations into our mass action expression, the equilibrium law for the weak acid will be x times x, yeah, x and x, over equilibrium concentration of HF, which is 0 0.50 minus X equals, this is given, we already know that, 7.1 times 10 to negative four, which is the Ka for the HF, hydrofluoric acid. So now we just need to solve for X. And if you notice, just by taking a look up for that expression, what we have here, right away, you will notice that solving this equation will produce a equation with the form, uh, form like uh, probably a, a, a x square, plus or minus bx, plus or minus c equals zero. And what is this? Do you remember this? It's terrifying when we see this form. The infamous quadratic equation that you don't want to see on these days because then you will have to spend some few minutes, four or five minutes just to solve the, the equation by hand, quadratic equation, and you need to solve it using the quadratic equation, and you will find two roots, I mentioned this before, x and x prime, and you will pick out of these two results, 
that solves this equation, you will pick the one that makes more sense, the, the number that makes more sense. For example, if you get negative, that doesn't make sense because X is representing concentrations here. So negative concentration doesn't make sense. So you say, uh-uh, no good. So you pick the other one. Or if the one of them is a bigger number, like for example, bigger than 0.50, well, that doesn't make sense because if you start with 0.50, the minus X cannot be more than 0.50. So that number will not make sense. So you, you get rid of that number. All right. So I will invite you to solve this equation by hand. It's a good practice. It's a good, um, brain exercise and find the values of X. And then you plug that over here, over here, and you find the equilibrium concentration of H3. Once you find the concent equilibrium concentration of H3O plus, now we, can, we are done because that's all what we need to find the pH. And we know pH, what is pH? pH equals negative log of concentration of H plus, right? In our case, remember that X, what is X? X is the equilibrium concentration of H3O plus. And that's the one the, this is the equilibrium, it has to be the equilibrium concentration of H3O plus. That's the one that you plug over here. So basically, PX equals negative log of X. And you find the pH. So that's how, how you do. However, I have a good news for you. We can get around of this terrifying quadratic equation. Most of the times we can do that. Um, not always you can get around. But I'll show you in what cases we can do it. We are going to assume the following. Look, this is the same previous structure we have. Is the same one with these values? So Again, if you do this by hand, you will arrive to a quadratic equation, and so you will need to spend three or four minutes to solve it. However, let's compare this number with this number here. So if the Ka the ionization constant for the Ka for the weak acid is very small. So we are, we are expecting X to be very small. That's what we expect. Because this equilibrium produces very little amount of products in this order of magnitude. So this number should be very, very little. And we, if this is going to be very little number, then 0 0.50 minus very small number is about 0 0.50. It's not the same. That's why we don't have the equal sign here. It's about, you put this like a wavy, equal there, that means about 
approximately 0.50, right? Like uh, you have a very small number, subtract that from 0.50 and basically you get 0.50. But there's a rule. You can do that only if this number is less than 5% of the KA. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that X is going to be very small and later when we find it, we are going to compare to see if we, we were right. If we find that X is too big and we cannot do this assumption, we cannot do this approximation, then we have to do it solving the quadratic equation. Again, most of the times we can get around and we just do this simplification because we have a small number and we started with a decent initial concentration. Also depends on the initial concentration because you have very diluted solution. Therefore, the very diluted solution will produce a very little X and the very little X will be in about the same order of magnitude. Therefore, we cannot do the approximation. We have to solve it using the quadratic equation. All right, so if we do the approximation, look how nice is that? This expression becomes approximately X squared over 0.50 because we say, oh, this is going to be very small. So 0.50 minus something that is very small equals 0.50. We simplify that equals 7.1 times 10 to the negative four, which is the Ka and now we can solve it. So X squared equals 0.50 times 10.71, uh, 7.1 times 10 to the negative four. And you get 3.55 times 10 to the negative four. But this is X squared. So we take a square root on both sides and we get X equals the square root of 3.55 times 10 to negative four, this number, and you get the value of X. Now, once you find X using this approximation, you need to stop and do the reasoning and say, was I right doing the approximation? Is that going to introduce a lot of error in my calculation? Am I within the 5% rule? That's the 5% rule. What is, what is 1.9 times 10 negative two? So you write it, it will be zero point zero one nine model. So remember the approximation we did here. That was the approximation we did, right? Point fifty minus x. We were assuming x to to be. We were expecting x to be very small, so we found x to be around zero point zero one nine nineteen. How much is 0 0.50 minus 0 0.019? Uh, you can say it's 0 0.50, right? So once you do the approximation, you proof. You need to write the proof that your X is less than 5%. Then we plug those, this number, we have to plug that number 
1.9 times 10 to the negative 2 into our equilibrium expressions to find how much or to find what is the equilibrium concentration of each species here. Right? That's what we have here. So the final equilibrium concentration of HF equals 0.50 minus the number we just got equals 0.48 molar. Equilibrium concentration of H3O plus equals 0 0.019. Equilibrium con concentration of F minus equals 0 0.019 molar. What is the pH? pH equals negative log of concentration of H3, this one, this one, that's pH. Negative log of concentration, molar concentration of H3O plus. Right here, you put that, you calculate it, and you got 1.72. That's the pH of the solution. You see? So, it basically, what we did in equilibrium, we just keep practicing equilibrium, but this time is on weak acids. So, for weak acids, it has to be in equilibrium. We have to use the equilibrium law because we have partial ionization. So this is the, the rule, and you test it, right? You test that you, you were right doing the approximation. So the equilibrium concentration is 0 0.019 divided by the initial concentration, which, which was 0.50 times 100, and that gives you 3.8, which is less than 5%. Less than 5%, that's the 5% rule. So, yes, we were right doing the approximation, we are fine. If at the end you do this demonstra demonstrations, you need to remember every time you do the demonstration, you need to write it down. Show that your approximation is less than 5% of the initial concentration. And happens that this formula here is the formula for percent ionization. Many times the, the, the problem asks, what is the percent ionization for the ionization of a given weak acid? Well, that's the formula. Is the equilibrium concentration that was ionized, this much was ionized. If we look at the initial equation here, you see, that's the initial HF and 0.50. And how much is ionized? X and X. So this number, the equilibrium concentration of the ionized ion or ionized species over the initial concentration of the acid times 100 will give you percent ionization. 
So with that number, you, you can find two things. You can find, with this number, you can find the pH and you can find the percent ionization. And also, you can use it to prove. When you find the percent ionization, you prove that you were right doing the approximation and you didn't have to do the solve it using the quadratic equation. All right, another, another one. Let's see this one. It says the Ka for hypochlorous acid, HClO, is 3.5 times 10 to negative eight. Look at the number, very small number for the Ka. Calculate the pH of the solution at 25 degrees Celsius. That is 0 0.0075 molar in HClO. So that's the initial concentration of HClO, hypochlorous acid. We need to find the pH, Ka is given, so we write the balanced chemical equation. Balanced chemical equation, we write the ice table, put the initial concentrations, write the change according with the stoichiometric ratios, find the equilibrium concentration of each species there, write the equilibrium expression for that. And since we are very familiar and we have done this so many times, we can skip now some steps, right? So we, we can gain, gain time. Like for example, Ka equals, right away, I know it's going to be x times x, so it's going to be x squared over this expression here, 0 0.0075 minus x. And that equals the given value of Ka, 3.5 times 10 to negative eight. And when you see this, you know this is going to arrive to a quadratic equation and you have, you have to make a decision. Are you going to solve it using quadratic equation or are you going to use the approximation using the 5% rule? You think you can comply with the 5% rule? We can try. We don't want to solve it using quadratic equation at least that we have two. All right, let's do the approximation. Let's say, so we say, since this is very small number, look at the order of magnitude. So it's going to be zero point, look, I'm going to do it this time, later I'm not going to do it anymore. Zero point, one, two, three, four, five, six, one more, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh yeah, one more, one more here, five, that's it, that's the value, look at the number and compare that number with the initial concentration. This is a very diluted, very diluted. And uh, so we're expecting this number to be very small here. Being realistic, probably the concentration of water here uh, from the, the concentration of H3O plus will be affected by the auto ionization of water. But let's assume that that's not going to make an effect. Let's just solve this one. So let's say x is very small. 
So, 0 0.0075 minus x is about, and you need to write it this way, and you need to show this reasoning, 0 0.0075. Therefore, now we have x squared divided by 0 0.0075 times uh, equals 3.5 times 10 to the negative 8. And then you solve for x, which is the square root of uh, 0 0.0075 times 3.5 times 10 to the negative 8. You solve that, and what do you get? So notice, I, I can give you a hint here, that will make your life very easy. Most of the cases for a monoprotic weak acids, look at monoprotic, that means one proton, and that's going to be mostly our cases here. X, which is the concentration at the equilibrium, for most of the cases will be a square root and doing the approximation is going to be x equals, look that, initial concentration, initial concentration of your acid, initial, times, times Ka. I should write it the other way. It looks better. Yeah, it looks better the other way. Look, Ka, your weak acid, times initial concentration of your acid. Initial. You times these two, take the square root, find x, and that's it, you're done because this X is your concentration of your hydrogen ions. And so the pH will be negative log of X. Look down your calculator and you're done. That's it. Less than two minutes. The clue here is that you write your equation, you write your ice table so you don't get lost. Always write it down, practice many times, and then you will realize you can, you can draw this in less than 30 seconds. And another 30 seconds to do this approximation because you already know you know this, and you know you have a monoprotic, Usually, initial concentration is given. Usually, the Ka is given. So just put this here, find x, find negative log, and that's it. You're done. Of course, once you find x, once you find x, you find percent ionization, which is what? Your x over initial concentration of your acid, initial, times 100. So many things you can do this, many type of problems. You can find the pH, you can find percent ionization, and also once you find percent ionization and you notice that this number here is less than 5%, yeah, this is also demonstra demonstration that you were right doing this approximation here. 
So you see, you can do many things here. But remember, you have to look this, you have to write it, write your rice table, look the, the number here, the, the, the KA, make sure this is very small compared to the initial concentration. If this number is not too big, like for example is, look at the order of magnitude, this initial concentration. The order of magnitude here is uh, 7.5 times 10 to the negative three, right? This is concentration, molarity. That's the initial concentration in scientific notation. So the order of magnitude is to the thousandth. One over thousand. If the KEA isn't the same for a particular, not for this case, this is 10 to the negative eight, but let's say another acid, if the KEA for the acid is around this order of magnitude, 10, 10 to the negative two, 10 to the negative three, or 10 to the negative four, so you cannot do the approximation because that will introduce a lot of error. So the subtraction here will be, will give a significant, will be significant. So be careful with that. But most of the cases, most of the cases, just look at the numbers, compare and very quickly apply this shortcut, find X, find pH, find personal initiation, you are done. Easy. All right. So let's see here the setup we found. We do the approximation here, same thing we did before. We apply that formula, the secret formula. Don't tell this anybody. Just keep it secret. People will ask, why are you doing this too fast? What is your secret? Why are you doing this too fast? And look, when we do the percent ionization, we find the percent ionization is le less than 5%. So yes, we were right doing the approximation, the pH, and the value happens to be 1.62 times 10 to negative five. Look, very small number. And the pH is 4.79. So that's how you solve these type of problems. All right, uh, you can practice with this, one more, keep practicing. Um, same thing, same type of problems. Let me see this one, personalization. Yeah, same type of problems. Now, this is a, this is a different setup. Let's say when pH is given and you need to find the KA. That's another situation. This is a different scenario. KA is not given, but pH is given. And we need to find the KA. Piece of cake. Because if pH is given, you know, pH equals negative log, negative, negative log, let me write it here. pH equals negative log of concentration of H3O plus at equilibrium. If pH is given, you can find, you can find this. Right? So let's analyze. The problem, what's given? pH 
give him what is this initial concentration right so you have in, in this case we're talking about uh, we can see which one any acid okay so h a initial concentration given pH given here ka unknown and we have enough information here plenty of information to find ka do we know the expression of ka yeah, it's just write the, your balance chemical equation, write your ice table as you know how to do it. But here the change is the equilibrium concentration, is your x, right? This is minus x plus x plus x. Over here, this is x and this is x. How do you find this concentration here? It's given already, it's pH. So we know the pH, which is negative log of concentration of H3O plus. So how do you find from here, how do you find concentration of H3O plus? Equals 10, remember the formula we learned last time, 10 to the negative pH. So once you know pH from here, you can find your X, which is this one. This is X, this is X is the same. The change, remember the change was minus X plus X plus X. What is the equilibrium concentration of HA? Initial minus X. The initial is 0 0.25 minus, minus x equals 2.2497. Plug that into the equilibrium expression, you are done. At home, take your time and do step by step. And you should write it again, rewrite everything on a piece of paper. Don't just look at the screen Stop the, the video, stop the recording, and do it by hand, everything. Take your time. You need that time. It's important that you rewrite everything I said here. And everything on the screen, rewrite it on the piece of paper. Make sure you're doing it step by step. What are those steps? You need to do it. Remember, stop the video and do everything on the paper. We'll write the, the, the problem. Write this information. Just rewind where I explained those. Write the balanced equation. Write your eyes table without cheating, do it yourself. Don't look at here, do it yourself. Write this, do your eyes table, look on the other side, turn around, do it yourself, and then come back compared to what you have on the screen. Write the, the mass action law, Look everything, do it in your calculator and compare to these results. Do it a couple of times. That's how we gain the skill. You can do a game, but this time faster. All right, next one. Aspirin, which is acetyl salicylic acid, has a formula HC9H7O4. Look, 
the name acetyl salicylic acid. And this is the formula. Look, this hydrogen was left here at the beginning, mostly like separating for the rest. What, what does that mean for you? It means that this is the acidic hydrogen. That's, they, they want to make emphasis writing it this way. And that's why for uh, aspirin, uh, we say if I was using for acidic acid, H, HAC, for acidic acid, for aspirin, I will use HAS, something like that. For benzoic acid, for benzoic acid, I will use benzoic acid. Probably I will use H benzoic, something like that. You see, to show this is the acidic, uh, acidic hydrogen, this one, this one in the molecule. And the rest is just the, the, the acetate. This, the acetate, in this case, the benzoate, and this is the uh, uh, acetyl salicylate, right? Acetyl salicylate, ec changes for eight, and you get the salt or the conjugate base of the acid. So for simplification, probably I will recommend use uh, HAS. Uh, so be careful because there's an element. There's an element AS. I know it's AC. To be careful with that so you don't get confused with an a, a element in the periodic table. All right. Anyway, this uh, represents a weak acid. This is the acidic. And this is the, that will represent the rest of the molecule that will become ionized, forming the, the, the salt, the conjugate base. In this case, the acetyl salicylate, and this is the hydronium. Anyway, let's go back to the problem. Aspirin is a weak acid. Yes, look at the structure of aspirin. So show me where is in this structure, what part, is telling you that this is a weak acid. You need to find for the carboxylic group, the COOH. Look, COOH. So we have the radical, which is the rest attached to a C O O H, and this is the acidic hydrogen. This radical happens to be the acetyl salicylate part when it's ionized. The rest is called the radical. Yeah. That's called R. R is attached to C O O H. So this is yes, this is uh, uh, a organic acid has an organic acid function on it. And you remember, all organic acids are weak. And we write this expression in equilibrium that way. So the problem says. 0.10 molar aqueous solution, so our aspirin has pH of 2.27 at 25 degrees Celsius. Find the Ka of the aspirin. Same thing, same process. You write your equation. Write the ice table. And the important thing here is that once you know the pH, and you know pH again, rewrite it, equals negative log of concentration of H plus in equilibrium. 
Therefore, concentration of H plus in equilibrium equals 10 to the negative pH. In this case, it's going to be 10 to the negative, what is the pH? 2.27. You plug down your calculator, which is the anti-log, right? You write 2.27 and hit the inverse log or anti-log function on your calculator. That's how you do it. Let me show you. I have a second function here. So we have, uh, so what is our number? 2.27 and has to be negative. Let me see if we can do it here. We have <clears throat> negative two, oh, we have to do the negative later, 2.27. 27, now we can change the, the number of that, the sign, and then we do anti-log of that, which is 10 to the, the number. And to do that has to be, here is the log. With the one log, we want to do 10 to the X. That's the anti-log. It's here, the function. So let's hit that. And that's what you get. 5.3 times 10 to negative, 5.37 times 10 to negative three. There you go, you see? 5.37 times 10 to negative, that's how you do it. And what is this? What is this? This is the concentration at the equilibrium H3O plus. This is your X. Now you can feel your ice table. The initial concentration was 0.10 minus this number equals 0 0.095. And then you can plug that into the mass action expression, find your Ka. Piece of cake. Just need to practice to gain, gain the, the skill. All right, you will see a couple of problems of this and the, the example. That, now, for weight bases, we do similar procedure. There's only a little extra procedure we need to do there. Because bases, for bases, what we are me measuring are equilibrium concentrations of OH minus. From there, you will find the POH. And when you have the POH, you can find the pH. So we are going to find the KB for weak bases, the ionization constant for the weak base, KB. We are going, we are going to calculate pH if we know KB or we are going to use the pH to find KB. Similar, as we did on the, for weak acids. So this represents the generic formula for a weak base. This is the base. This is our weak base that is willing to accept proton. That's the definition of base. From whom? from this guy here. So you can write H O H, that's water, right? H2O. So if this is a base, therefore 
the water here is going to work as acid and it's, it's weak. And today we are talking only about weak bases. So this is the base, it's going to accept protons. This is the acid, it's going to donate proton. What proton? This one, right? So the base is going to take that one, that proton. Here, and get this, HP plus. That plus comes from the acquisition of one proton, increasing the charge of the base. What is left from here? OH minus, remember this pair of electrons here, goes here to the oxygen. Could be more curly here to the oxygen. Let's fix that. That one goes to the oxygen here, that's why. This negative here is actually here on the oxygen, not on the hydrogen, right? Because we have um, H, O with these extra uh, electrons here. We have two, four, six, eight, All right? Two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it has extra negative charge, formal charge there. All right. So the oxygen is the one holding the negative charge. The expression for this equilibrium for the ionization of the weak base equals concentration of HP plus times concentration of OH minus over concentration of uh, initial concentration of the base. And that gives you a number. Again, the magnitude of the number tells you how weak is the base. I think I have a list of weak bases, let's see. Yeah. Do you just find any pattern here on these structures? Look at the structures to see if there's any pattern there. Yes, you're right. Nitrogen. Nitrogen has one pair of non-bonding electrons. <clears throat> Look. What is the simplest of these <coughs> sorry bases? <clears throat> The simplest one from this list is this one. Do you remember the name of this? NH3, right? Ammonia. This is our star weak base. Our star weak acid is acidic acid. Our star weak base is ammonia. And look, nitrogen, three single bonds with hydrogens and a pair of non-bonding electrons. Do you remember the shape of this? Pyramidal, trigonal pyramidal, like pyramid. But the nitrogen 
has a pair of non-bonding electrons here pushing this pyramid, pyramid down. Look here. One of the hydrogens was replaced by a CH3 organic function. This is R. This is going to be the R attached and replace this nitrogen here. What about here? Similar, right? One, one H was replaced by another R, CH3, CH, CH2. This is the ethyl portion here. This is methyl, one carbon, methyl radical here, ethyl radical here. And here, this nitrogen is inside a uh, ring. Uh, what is the generic name for this? structures having <clears throat> nitrogen, amines, yes, amines, look at the name, amines, all of them are organic ones are amines, the ones that have, have carbon, carbon with nitrogen, with this type of structure, simple bonds <coughs> are amines. The primary amines, only one had Hydrogen has been replaced. Secondary means when two of those are being replaced, and tertiary means when those three are applied. There are quaternary means too. Nowadays, quaternary salts of quaternary means are important because they are very good um, bacteria killers. Like for example, benzalkonium chloride. It's a salt of a quaternary amine. It's a bacteria killer. Used to clean and sanitize surfaces and even uh, your hands in very diluted, very, very diluted, it has to be very diluted solutions. Anyway. All of them are weak bases. So we can uh, say that all organic amines, well, amines are organic per se. All amines are weak bases. And they are, let's say, derivative of ammonia. So we're familiar with this ending and the names. I mean, every time you see I mean, you say, oh, that's a weak base. And look at the, 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 the K, KBs for the bases. The pyridine which is now I mean. It's a very weak base. Ammonia has Kb 1.8 times 10 to negative 5. Methylamine 4.4 times 10 to negative 4. And ethylamine is 5.6 times, times 10 to negative 4. We have two more here, very important. Aniline is a precursor for many reactions, many organic reactions. It's a primary amine. Very weak. And urea, very important because it's used to fertilize the soils. by adding urea to the soils that will increase the pH, making the soils more basic. So it helps to neutralize acidic. 
soils, balancing the pH of the soil, but also introduces nitrogen. Nitrogen is very important to fertilize soils. It's very used in the agriculture industry. All right, all of them are weak bases. Now let's show a problem, how to calculate pH from KB. It's similar, you will notice that it's going to be similar to what we did. Same procedure, same analysis, same strategy. So let's do this one. Let's find what is the pH of 0 0.04 in molar ammonia solution at 25 degrees. Again, the strategy is read the problem, find what is given, create the strategy, and let's do that. So what is given? We have initial concentration of NH3, which is 0 .0 0 0.040 molar. What is the question? What is not given? pH, we don't know. What else we need to solve this problem? We need an, another piece of information. We need the KV for ammonia. And again, you go and find down the tables in the back of the textbook, on different uh, chemistry tables. And you go back a couple of slides and you will find the KV for ammonia. You can remember that was 1.8 times 10 to negative five. So what is the strategy here? We know KB, we know initial, we need to find pH. What do we need to find pH? In order to find pH, since this is a base, the base cannot give you concentration of H plus. However, since this is a base, the base can give you, we can find concentration of OH minus in equilibrium. Remember, always in equilibrium, if you find the concentration of OH minus in equilibrium, then you can find POH. If you can find POH, then you can plug that into a little formula we learned last time. The formula that says the pH plus POH equals how much? How much is pH plus POH? I cannot hear you. Yes. 14. So you, you see, so we can find pH equals 14 minus POH. And we find POH from here, from the ice table. So you, you write your equation, put all the information, dry, draw the ice table, find the equilibrium concentrations that we learned already, but this time, this X, since we're talking about the weak base, this time X is going to be the concentration of OH minus at equilibrium. Yeah. Therefore, you can find the POH from here. What is POH? POH equals negative log of concentration of OH minus. When you know the POH, just plug that into your, into this equation here. So we plug that and we do, we, we can use the same shortcut the same approximation, you say 
x, once you plug these equilibrium concentrations into this formula, you will find that the only way to solve this is using quadratic equation. However, and since I give you a secret way to do it, an approximation, you can use the approximation taking into consideration that we are expecting X to be very small compared to the initial concentration and to the very small value of KB. And use that secret, plug that here, do the approximation, find percent ionization, prove that you were right doing the approximation and finish the problem. So, if you, if you do the approximation, you say, okay, so 0 0.040 minus X is about approximately 0 0.040. Therefore, X squared over 0 0.040 equals 1.8 times 10 to negative five. And remember I gave you another secret with weak acids. Let's apply that. So we find that X equals the square root of Ka, in this case, sorry, Kb, times initial concentration of, of the base. So X equals KB 1.8, sorry, square root of 1.8 times 10 to negative five times initial concentration, which is 0 0.040. And you will get a number there. And that number is your concentration of OH minus. Let's see, do this and your calculator, do this multiplication, then take a square root of that and write it down. You should get uh, X is 8.5 times 10 to negative four. Find percent ionization, which is X over initial concentration of the base times 100, which is 2%. It's less than 2% is less than 5%. So we were right doing the approximation. We are good. We can, we can keep on going using that number we found for X. Negative log of 8.5 times 10 to negative 4 equals 3.7. And what is this? This is POH. But the problem is, is not asking for POH. We don't use PA, POH as a reference. We use pH as a reference. So we need to find, remember that in the solution, there's a balance there's a balance between OH, concentration of H plus, and concentration of OH minus. If this goes up, this one goes down, or vice versa. If this goes down, this one goes up, but always the concentration Concentration of H plus times concentration of OH minus equals 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. That's the balance. So the pH for this particular solution equals 14 minus 3.07.
that's what you that's what you get so that's going to be 10.93 the ph of the solution that's your answer you see how easy is this it's just get the skill do a couple more problems and you will be good. Applying the equilibrium principle. Let's do one more. This time, if we know pH, we can find KB. Similar situation we did with the weak acid. So I'll give you some time to do this one. Try to do it yourself. And then we compare. I'm going to stop the recording here. I'll see you in the next recording.